Thank you, Marty, for this opportunity. I am uh, um, super delighted to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susanna Campanella. I'm the CEO, visionary, and owner of Blue Boost. Um, yeah. um, so we came to San Francisco for the very first time today uh, with my COO and partner, uh, Renzo. We came from Miami, uh, Florida. Um, I have an academic background in science, in biology, with a concentration in molecular biology. Um, I graduated my bachelor's with a minor in psychology. Um, I also have a master's in Christian philosophy um, and an executive certificate from uh, uh, Harvard Online Business School in finance. Um, like Marty said, we are um, operational investors. Um, so we've spent uh, over a decade buying distressed businesses, improving them, um, improving their, their operational infrastructure, branding, economics, um, and pretty much just overall improving them and then selling them for a profit. Uh, Gloop Boost is our seventh business venture. We've, um, like I said, it, uh, our choices have been small businesses making under a uh, million dollars, um, but it's been a fun ride. Uh, we really sort of stumbled into it. Um, Renzo is uh, more on, well, he'll give you his, his bio, but he's more on the operational side, direct contact with the employees, uh, culture creation of the business, um, more on the strategic side of the business and um, vision as to where the company or the project can go in the future. Um, so I'll leave you so you can do your quick yeah. introduction. Is this an acquisition also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having us today. Um, so as Susanna and Marty said, we are serious um, entrepreneurs and we focus specifically on distressed assets. We don't we don't buy anything that is making money, basically. We always go for you know what's not working. We found out that um, by um, actually acquiring a company that is distressed or was just losing money, you provide two main solutions. One exit um for the current business owner, you know, they're just looking desperately just to get rid of the business. Uh, so it's ultimately you're actually helping them, right? And two, you buy the business at a very fair amount, right? So whatever improvement you make at an early stage on that business, you're going to see, you know, huge increments on your um, investment. So you don't have to wait now eight to 12 to 18 months for you to be able to uh, see some of those improvements. Um, my background, um, it's basically fully operational. I've done um, a little bit on the uh, finance. We've owned a property casualty financial services. We've owned um, a property maintenance company. We also dabble into the education business schools. Um, and more recently, just, you know, literally just stumbled into e-commerce. And uh, it's been a fantastic ride so far. So, so uh, this is San Francisco, and it, it's a very nice audience. They're very socially driven, socially conscious, but they're also very greedy. So you describe, like, what are the terms you, you're acquiring companies for? Are, are like, they primarily earn outs? Are you giving them a little bit of cash? Are they self-financing buyouts? Maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, it's it's uh, interesting because the prior panel, uh, they were talking about earn outs. Um, I truly don't believe on, on earn outs. Um, if, if, I'm, if, you know, if we're actually acquiring something, we're going to go ahead and acquire it fully. That way there's no attachments with prior ownership. Some of the issues with earnouts is that sometimes the current owner will still have some sort of capacity in terms of decision making within the business. So we want to make sure that that's out of the door as fast as possible. Yeah. And so these are like million, less than a million dollar companies that are in terrible shape. So you're just like paying off their debt. So the, um, the, the way that we see it is we understand when we have a project in front of us, we understand that there is a market, um, that there was a, 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 some sort of a peak when they were in their revenue. And then the downside is typically the majority of the time because of the owners get very emotional with their spending, um, emotional with their employee retention. So um, they're not frugal. Um, so it, it's actually very easy for us to go in and we improve the spending. We try to keep it very objective. Um, and, um, and we don't like the earnouts only because 
there's just something about the previous owner not owning anymore that uh, demotivates them. Right. So I totally understand you don't want to do an earn out. I got it. What price are you paying when you acquire these companies? Roughly about 40% less than what the original price will be. Is it based on like the assets that the company has? Mostly assets, yeah. Okay. So you're buying it for assets? Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Like somebody wanted to sell me a medical practice and it, and it was losing patients, right? And they said $300,000. I said, and the guy had gone to Wharton. I said, so, so what class at Wharton does it tell you to buy companies that are losing business for $300,000? And I walked away. A week later, they came back. I'll, I'll sell it to you for, for the equipment, $10,000. Then I bought it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so I mean, so maybe it's a Yeah, I mean, one. we do use com comparables, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, when we first, our very first business, when we acquired uh, an insurance firm, we did go for the multiples. But um, this is one of our insider things that we do. And once we're in and we show interest, the seller uh, gets very well interested as well. Um, so from that point on, it's really strategic when it comes to the final price. Um, even though we go for the multiple, we, through the due diligence, we're able to kind of like expose the, the lacks um, and, um, and we just try to lower that multiple, to be honest. Oh, okay, question. Yeah. How do you source these opportunities? Question one. And approximately how many do you look at per year and how many do you actually purchase? So internet is the source. <laughs> there are many ways uh, really to uh, look for opportunities online. Um, to be transparent, we're not that great when it comes to networking. We're more like operating oriented individuals and um, we just try to do think we try to do things on our own. So we source, we reach out. Um, and that's really what we've done in the past. We do not have a system when it comes to the process of buying and selling. It's more sort of like whatever's available out there in front of us. And if it's a good opportunity. I'm very familiar with the space. I'm working with a company right now. I can't they use what are called private sponsors. So a sponsor mm -hmm. finds the opportunity. They do their due diligence. They get it under a letter of and then they bring it to my company. Oh, wonderful. See, that's... And that way they eliminate a lot of expense and mm. more deal flow, and they only purchase 2% of the deals they see a year. Mm. They're very selective. So I would right. recommend that you emphasize your, your bandwidth of what you see and your selective, very selective, will get you a lot, a lot faster with your goal. That's oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, as yeah, I mean, not only that, but I mean, you're in Florida, which has more people selling their business than anywhere else oh, in the yes. country because of all oh, the retirees. Yes. Every oh, day. Yes. So your oh, purview yes. just doesn't have to be Florida. It can be guys from New York who retire to Florida who don't know what to do with their business back in New York. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Actually, as we, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. This company, uh, we actually acquired from Texas. Amazing. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Good example. So, yeah, I mean, as we... And what, and what was the introduction that you... How did you make the introduction to them? Did they... We hey, reached... In your company? We used you? a, a, a broker. Uh, there's a um, a website that they... All they do is sell businesses. Um, so, in the period we were looking for a company, when Glupus came in, uh, we used that broker platform, um, per se. And... Um, but, yeah, we reached out. Uh, another thing that I want to say to your point was that as we grow as operational investors, we're going to be able to master and, you know, uh, make it more systematic as to uh, the different aspects of acquiring a business. One last question. I think. What sector is we focused on? Because the firm I'm working with focuses on five sectors only. So mm. If you're too broad, people will get... Hurt. Yeah, for sure. So... Um, I mean, I, we've been doing this over a decade, but I think we're still um, in our beginning stage as to operational investors. We've tried to stay stay in the realm of the expertise that we personally have. Um, I'm very, I have a variety when it comes to my education. I have a bachelor's in biology, a minor in psychology, uh, a certificate in finance. I have a postgraduate certification, SLPA. I have a few things that I'm very interested in learning. So what we try to do is wherever we feel we're understandable of the industry, that's when we are willing to take the risk. 
uh, pretty much. Renso is pretty strong on, I mean, overall operations and insurance. Uh, so again, as we grow, I guess um, it'll get better. I mean, it, it really sounds, and, and look, we're a smart group of guys here. Um, people, group of people. <laughs> um, it, it sounds like, like you're like the equivalent of what they call a search fund in the business, but you're not really... You, you have a positive that you're looking for a company to acquire, which I, I tell you, I think you should research what a search fund is in the near future, because okay. uh, it, it might help you crystallize how you're approaching things. But this is great. Why don't we start with Gloop Boost? Yes. Absolutely. So let's get into Gloop Boost. Uh, one thing I can tell you is I have never been as passionate about a business as I am with Gloop Boost. Uh, not only because of the products that we offer, but the ripple effect that it's creating in women's lives. So Glucose is a health and beauty company that offers innovative products for women's body shaping needs. We are revolutionizing the body shaping sector with powerful plant-based topicals and supplements that deliver remarkable results. We are an answer to an emerging market seeking to shape their, their curves. And by curves, I specifically mean Botox, breast area, and waistline, okay? So in order to tell you more about the amazing things that are happening at Glute Boost, um, I have to tell you a little bit more about the problem we as, women's, as women face. And that is body dissatisfaction and body insecurities. To give you a little bit more perspective um, uh, about the, the industry, a randomized study from UCLA shows that 91% of women are unhappy with their bodies resorting to dieting. 70% of women feel worse after reading women's magazines. And this is from the National <laughs> Organization for women, these are staggering numbers. The another staggering number is how between the years 2015 and 2019, the total number of Brazilian butt lifts increased by 90%, and it continues to grow at a 22% growth rate. Women want specific body shaping solutions. It's not just about gaining and losing. They want specific solutions. Our data shows that the body part that women want to enhance the most is the bum, the buttocks. So what are our options? We either have plastic surgery, extreme exercise, or expensive treatments. But if you think about it, all of it, it's too expensive, too dangerous, and just too much. So when we decide we're not going to resort to these solutions, we internalize our dissatisfaction and we believe we're not enough. And when we experience failure in one area, it can negatively impact the performance of everything else that we do. It just percolates. It becomes a body and mind issue. And my friends, this is a global struggle. So what is the global solution? Is there any data on the number of women that this fall in this category? Oh, yeah. It. Yep. I, it, okay. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually in our regular extended pitch deck as well. Um, so, what is the Glute Boost solution? Products and formulas that work. There are two aspects to the Glute Boost solution, and you can think of it a, as a coin. One side of the coin, which is our main focus, is on formulas that deliver results. But the whole global solution is rooted in the validity of our formulas. Every product has been carefully formulated um, to provide best results. We use innovative compounds created by some of the best scientists in the world. And we are intentional about the delivery method for best formulation results. Is there an intellectual property or trade secrets involved here? We own the formulas. And, and is it is it patented or is it, is so it trade I'll, secrets? I'll show you a little bit. I'll okay. go in depth about the specific ingredients. Um, the second aspect to the Glute Boost solution, and it's what I call the beauty of, of Glute Boost, is in the validity of our formulas, giving life to the core value of the company. And that's to empower women. 
to close the gap between health and beauty and body and mind. Why? Because you can be beautiful and healthy at the same time. And to change your body, you have to change your mind. Our social media initiatives are centered around promoting beauty in its most diverse ways. So our products promise to get results in a natural way. It gets them closer to their body goals and it makes them feel great in their own skin. So this is the Glute Boost way to empower women. These are our products. We're well known for our bum shaping line, but we have a broad product assortment. Here we have them categorized distinctively by our lines. We group our products by lines for a specific area of concern. Our average product pricing is around $39. We have amazing margins. Um, our hero products, which is more over here, uh, we were able to, part of the, the uh, restructuring of everything, uh, boost them to 93% uh, product margin. Um, so how do they work? In our supplements, we use molecules called phytoestrogens. These are plant molecules, plant-derived estrogens. They're non-detrimental and have been, they have been scientifically studied to be hormone regulatory um, with remarkable health benefits. They also have the ability to produce secondary signaling cascades um, that target subcutaneous adipose tissue growth around the hip and breast area. The effects of the supplements are very analogous to the phase of ovulation, creating um, slight phenotypic changes, okay? In our enhancing cream, uh, which go back real quick, in our enhancing back, in our enhancing creams, if you remember the pink one, the blue one, yeah. and the purple one, they, the three of the creams have the exact same formula. We just color, color coordinated the different lines for marketing purposes. Um, so you can go to the excerpt. So this is an excerpt from Dr. Gabriel Serrano's study on his developed compound. Dr. Gabriel Serrano, um, he developed Siderma. Um, and this is a huge, a, uh, uh, manu they're not a manufacturer. They are manufacturer, but they are also the source of the compound that we use uh, for the enhancing creams, uh, which is called volufiline. Um, the volufiline itself has been patented, but we have not patented has been our formulas our, uh, uh, for the creams, um, which is something that we want to do as soon as possible. Um, but polyfiline pretty much stimulates adipose differentiation and proliferation and promotes lipid storage, leading to an increase in adipocyte volume in the fatty tissue. So let's talk a little bit more about the market. Glucose operates at the intersection of the fastest growing segments in beauty and health. The common denominator between the different categories or sectors our audience comes from um, is a buyer persona that is seeking natural ways to shape their bodies. Another category not projected here is a company like Skims. This is a um, Kim Kardashian company in the shapewear sector, also to enhance the waist to hip ratio, which is another natural way for women to enhance their curves. And it just talks to you about the market that is out there. So it is no surprise that the beauty industry is a, a monster. Um, and for this category, which is beauty and personal care, TAM is at 528 billion with a growth rate of 4.6. And we have SAM at one uh, um, 104 billion with a growth rate of 9%. The potential for scalability is almost endless. Any woman in the world becomes a potential customer. Uh, Glute Boost is a category creator poised to outpace the success of its larger competitors. Why? Because 
with our holistic approach to body shaping solution alongside our mental health initiatives, we are catering a larger audience and creating a greater impact in the lives of our customers. To give you a um, perspective on the competitive landscape, Sol de Janeiro raised $40 million back in 2019 and sold majority stake to Aloxetane, a beauty conglomerate, in 2021, valuing the company at $450 million. They did this as a bum skincare brand. Maylis Cosmetics um, received a minority investment of $30 million in 2021 uh, to expand their body sculpting, they call it body sculpting, skincare only brand. There's a huge demand in the market for bum shaping solutions. Um, so how do we sell? We sell through our online store, also Amazon and other marketplaces. There are um, to your right, these are some of the platforms and tools that we use to amplify our sales and reach. Um, 2023 has been a year of strategic partnerships that we believe will catapult the company's brand awareness and growth efforts. We have THG Ingenuity, which is a large public company that specializes in brand globalization through the direct-to-consumer landscape. They have helped globalize companies like Coca-Cola, Gillette, Emelis, which is a beauty brand, and My Protein, which is a company valued at 100 million. Do you guys use distributors or do you have any? Uh, I'm going there. Okay. So we have UNFI, which is another large public company, and they do wholesale, wholesale distribution. Uh, we also use Primalist, which is um, an, uh, an intelligent, technology-driven paid media and SEO marketing agency. So to talk more a, bit, a little bit about our traction, company started 2015. We acquired the company 2019. Between the years 2019 and 2022, we restructured the company's operational infrastructure. We uh, gave it a new vision. We improved R&D um, and we developed new products, actually nine of them. Um, but it, within that time, what we did was we did a competitive um, qualitative analysis of our product market fit through customer feedback and experiences. And we did that through social media and directly with the consumer. Prior to acquiring the company, I had, how much had been invested in it by the prior Say that owners? again? How much had been invested in the company by the prior owners? So this, this, is, this is a... Um, we run through this a lot where the company that we acquire was usually because something chaotic happened. And in this case, two brothers got in a fight and none won, nothing with the other. And the other one, he has the information, but I don't care. I'm just selling the thing because kind of a deal. Right. So, so what we have in front of us is a set of numbers, uh, uh, revenues uh, from the moment that they um, uh, started the company. But they don't have any kind of like research cost to create the product? Like how much did they spend to, to create the product? Do you know that? To be honest, it's irrelevant because we do our own due diligence and we're able to figure out on our own means how to do these exact same thing that they're doing, meaning manufacturers and so. Um, and if we have a better pricing than what they're telling us they they get, then we just move on. I'm forward. not asking about the price. I'm asking how much they invested. It's, it's actually kind of relevant for other investors. Maybe there's another way to put it. Um, so... So you acquired, how much did you acquire the company for? 1.6. 1.6 million? Okay, great. And what was, the, what was the revenue at the time you acquired it? 600 and change. Got it. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. So within the, that year, 2019 and 2022, we did a lot of testing and we added a lot of value to the company. Um, it was also a time that we needed to understand what was going to be our competitive advantage. And we understood that that would happen with the introduction of our core value, which is the closing the gap between mind and body and health and beauty and pushing for women empowerment. And, mm -hmm. and just to touch on, on Marty's comment, 
Uh, we acquired the company in 2018. So basically in the middle of just crazy valuations and just, you know, free money, right? Um, based on our way to do business, we actually didn't fall into, you know, a company that would have been worth, which they started at almost $4 million when they put it in the market. We just, you know, we took, we, we actually, when we uh, ended up talking with them, this company has been in the year, it's been about a year in, in market already. And then within that year, they even fought more. So we took it all the way down to now, you know, 1.6, which we thought at that moment was the factual valuation of a, of a true distress, distress asset. Um, so a little bit more about the financials and understanding the past and the future. Um, again, 2023 has been a year of our Series A fundraise and uh, strategic partnerships. Um, if you see there in the graph, 2019 is when we acquired the company. That was the only year we were EBITDA negative. From that point on, we've always been EBITDA positive. Um, 2020, as you see, uh, was COVID. So that inflated some of the numbers. People were home buying online products, but it gave us a really nice room for us to do the adding of value to the company and the restructuring that normally is a downside, not an upside. Um, but um, the, the revenue projected here, which is uh, 36 months, our figures we feel very confident will be obtainable through the execution of our business plan and the granularity that we have for our strategy. So just to give you an overview of that, um, what do we plan on doing moving forward? So we think working with key celebrities will help with the amplification. Um, scientist ambassadors will be great for validation of our products and a strong brand awareness campaign. We think that the combination of those three will really reduce the consumer anxiety because this is a company in a niche of a niche, what I call it. I have a family office question from the audience. Uh, so which, have any third-party consumer reports tested your products? So this is something that I have um, as a to-do. To be honest with you, as soon as I raise the money, I already have uh, a quote from a manufacturer that will be doing clinical and scientific studies on our hero products to start with. What's the return policy if the buyer isn't satisfied? 60 days. And right now- 100% return? Yeah. And right now we are averaging about 1.5 to 1.8 on a monthly basis returns. 1.5%? Percent. percent. So less yeah. than 2%. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So there are plenty, there's plenty of literature when it comes to phytoestrogens themselves. Because they are plant derived estrogens, they don't have the detrimental. Um, effects that regular estrogen supplementation would do. It's actually a great supplement when it comes to the regulatory uh, um, factors that we need when it comes to testosterone and estrogen. It really helps regulate. When it comes to mood, um, and this I can tell you from, from an empirical uh, study that I've done with my customers, is that they're because we have maca root in the formulation, I assume, which is another phytoestrogen, it helps them with the mood. Now, our blue pills um, from the bump shaping line have L-tyrosine, which also aids in improving their mood. So we do get a lot of feedback saying, I have a lot more energy, my hair is amazing. So I guess we are aiding in the whole mood. Um, issue that a lot of women face. What's the regulatory environment for this? So when it comes to the nutraceuticals, we're not required. We do require to operate with an FDA approved, uh, an FDA 
uh, certified manufacturer, which we do. And we, we have that here in the US. We outsource, um, we use China for the tubes themselves uh, and the packages, but uh, we use US um, manufacturing facilities. And your margins are 90%, 85%? Mm -hmm. So on, when we acquired the company, there were around the 60 you know, percentile. Um, after doing what we do, it went all the way up to 93, 92, 93% on the Hero product. On average, throughout the whole line, throughout, I guess, all the products, we're now averaging 83%, 84%. So do you have any demographic studies of who is the, you know, most demanding for products like Absolutely, this? Absolutely, yeah. So and, we... and geographies as well? And mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I assume this is a North America product first? Yeah. I mean, that's the target uh, market. But again, like I said, it's a global issue. Um, but the ones that stand out the most, that buyer persona, is in the African American and Latino communities, and then Caucasian, and then other ethnicities. But those are the main ones. So that's about forty percent of the U.S. female population. Got it. Right. When THG Ingenuity they reach out to us, they they um at the beginning they only wanted to approach the company on a uk perspective um they said hey listen we want to actually take you guys to the uk um and just go ahead and launch this product into the uk now the demographics in the uk is becoming somewhat similar to what we're experiencing here you know in the us in terms of you know uh diversity, uh, diversity and migration um but yes there is a huge demand um on the western side of europe uh for this type of product Right. So just just as a, a point of impact is that we I was at a uh, board of directors meeting for a not for profit in New York a couple of weeks ago, and there's a heavy Latino influence in it. And one person stated that women Latinos have now become the largest consumer segment in the United States wow. because of the age. Right. Because if you look at the demographic tree, you know, the average age of a Latina woman is you know, uh, 25 years old in the United States, not including migrants. And so, which makes it about 15, yeah. right? So, so you know, so, so it's, it's a pretty strong um, group. And, and I'll, an African-American also, I think the average age is 35 years old now or 32 years old. So, yeah, so our, it's pretty interesting from a demographic point of view. The age group uh, of our buyer persona is between 25 and 45. So. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So last slide. Which so is, you need to get access then to media that that you know whether it's TikTok or things like that that actually uh, oh, influences yes. those people. Definitely. Yep. Right. Yes. And and being from from um, a, a company that is based out of Miami, uh, you know, and and Miami being one of the biggest hubs in the world when it comes to now surgery, black oh, surgery. Sure, of course. Yeah. We're actually going against the current on on that aspect, but we're almost piggyback off of people that. Hey, you know, I, I want to accomplish this goal, but in a natural way. What's the price point? Forty dollars. So you so it's rather so rather than financing, you know, cosmetic $5, surgery $5. at five thousand dollars, you you spend forty bucks for a month and, supply. Yeah, and 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 like I said, our main goal is not just to throw you some amazing products, but to incentivize a mental health initiative. So we help women understand that this is a, a mind and body issue. I personally know many women that go under the knife, uh, but then want to go again and again and again and again and again and again, because it is not a body issue alone. It's a mind and body issue. And that's what we want to offer. Let me help you live this blue boost lifestyle so that you can see results and feel great in your own skin. And, and it motivates you to go to the gym and start eating healthier. So it's, it's a lifestyle that we want to promote with Glute Boost. So what's your, what's your historical performance on buying and selling companies? Is the gain, you know, IRR 30%, uh, 4X? What's the average duration? Well, this is our seventh, um, Talk about our insurance. Yeah, this is our seventh um, uh, company so far. On with the, the biggest success that we had was on the property and casualty firms that we acquire. Um, we grew that about 400%. Yep. Um, so when we acquired that, that company, it was actually almost, almost collapsing when the person wouldn't be able to pay the rent anymore. 
um, they only had, I believe, 30 some clients. When we sold the company back in 2018 through NMA, um, we sold with over 6,000 clients. I'm sorry. So, what did you buy it for? What did you sell it for? We bought it for $45,000, I believe. 45 and you sold or it for, for uh, seven figures. You want to give it an exact number? $2 million. Well, $2, million. two and 2.2 2, because I had some sort of... And how, long, and how long did you hold the company for? How long? What was the duration of your hold? That, well, 2011 to 2018. So That's about good. seven years. That's not bad. It's a pretty good return. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and how about for this product? What are your thoughts? Okay. So um, the, let's go to the last slide because it'll give you an idea of the future of Glute Boost. Um, so what do we want to do in the future? We want to move on after the 36 month uh, runway. We want to move on to what we call phase three, which is the Glute Boost Marketplace. Um, so think a boutique style, one-stop shop for all curve enhancement, beauty and health products. Um, and I believe the best way to accomplish this is through an IPO. Why? It will fuel the IPO and give global recognition to the marketplace. And the idea is for us to increase our product selection within the different lines that we have, which are um, specific areas of concern, specific areas of the body, and then add products to that. So think a Sephora, I mean, to be very honest with you, we thought, okay, maybe a Sephora. The whole Sephora concept is that you would bring in um, competitors to your uh, uh, to your umbrella, to your store. So it's either we increase our product, product line or we bring in competitors. Is, is online equivalent to Sephora? For curve enhancement? For, you know, beauty products. I mean, Sephora and Ulta are the only specialty retails marketplaces. So we would be opening a new kind of marketplace in the curve enhancement sector. And, and any thoughts here, like in terms of like a... So that's it for the presentation. If you guys have any questions, any questions? Have to answer. Well, you should have some demos here. You should have some before. <laughs> oh, the that's pictures. That's a good one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, at, look at Oprah Winfrey. She's... She's got millions of shares of Weight Watchers, but you know, for all the things she used, she, you know, she lost any weight in that <laughs> So it would be nice to have a live example. Yes. There it is. There you go. I have a live example. Not <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, I mean, our products That's show fine. will Look. show a difference. This is not a miracle maker um, product meaning you're going to get results a week later. You have to understand, again, the whole concept of body and mind and that this is a new lifestyle that you would be adopting. Women normally see, normally see um, their slight changes, which it means the world to these women, okay? Um, but they are able to see these slight changes after two months using the products. So the nature of our products is really for the customers to come back to us and to create these repeat customers. You need to speak to Alexandra Cambridge Wilkinson. I'm going to introduce you to her. She's a huge venture capitalist in this space. I just wonder about repeat buyers who are trying to get a sense. Of well, that's the whole forty dollars a month versus you know. So 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 what percent buy for two months or is there discount for buying a year's product or people that come back? Mm -hmm. So we are our return customer base is at 40, between 40 and 50% of our revenue is from repeat customers. Um, we do have a uh, subscription model in the website where if you subscribe, then you get, if I'm not mistaken, 10% discount. So we incentivize our customers uh, to subscribe and continue to be repeat customers. We recently launched a rewards program. So that's throwing a lot more um, incentives for our customers to join the family, what we call, join the family, get some perks, some more discounts. And we really just want to lock in the whole customer, um, repeat customer base. What's the pre-money on the 10 million you're raising? That is at 15 million. So we are looking to raise $10 million 
um, for equity um, and 40%. Any other thoughts? Do you have a product? You know, I mean, to me, they're very, they're very similar to being, um, you know, like a uh, a search fund or 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 they operate like um, independent sponsors. Tyson, you had a question. Yeah. Do you have a product for men? Men sometimes get what are known as beer bellies. Well, uh, for which part of the body? I'm sorry. The beer the belly. belly. A beer belly. So our yellow line, which we call the Slayet line, it's it's really, I mean, all of our products are for both genders. We have actually a pretty strong male um, customer base, believe it or not. I mean, we don't know if they're uh, buying for their, their partners or themselves. We do have a pretty strong um, customer base where they're male looking for changes um, and they're loving the products as well. So uh, even though we use, I mean, our target audience is for women um, and we use the hearts and the bright colors and, and it's very feminine. Um, something that we've thought about in the future is creating sort of like sister lines, but more for men um, because we do have protein and, and an assortment of products. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, with things like Ozempic, you know, I can imagine this would be very popular because Ozempic is supposed to get rid of all the gluteal fat. So, and I don't know, there's a huge wave of people using Ozempic around the country these days and drugs like Ozempic. So, um, any other comments, any other questions? If, if you, uh, actually, here's a great entrepreneur right here. Thank you. How many uh, customers? Oh, we just answered that question. It was 40% repeat customers. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's about a, million, a 2 million in revenue right now. So we are projecting 2 million um, this year. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, right now we have around 100,000 active customers. But it, it grows on a daily basis. What's the cost of acquisition per customer? Do you know? Yes. Uh, so right now it's at... Forty-six. Forty-six dollars to acquire a customer. Oh yeah. <clears throat> okay. And you are you using like social media or what? What? Oh yeah. So social media platforms. Um, we we push a lot of our email campaign, which is thirty percent of our sales is through emails. Wow. We're really strong on creating organic sales instead of just like throwing money on your ad spend. Um, so. Obtaining organic traffic and organic sales is our main focus. Do you sell it like at events or other locations as well? Like, do, how do you build a brand? Just online Most as online? of now. Yeah. The average order value right now. You have a social media company, don't you? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, the average order value is uh, $89. <laughs> the average? The average order value, the AOV. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, you know, for the store right now, it's at $89. Meaning that customers are buying just more than one, one product. individual product. Yeah. First time. And what's the duration of a repeat customer? Is it like two months or two years? It varies. We've had customers that have been with us since we acquired the company. Um, yeah, others, the product. three, two. I mean, it really, we have a little bit of, of everything. All right. Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways to sell this. So anyway, listen, great job, guys. Thanks so much. All righty. Thank you.